Seasonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru here with Silverstone of Computex 2019. We've got a number of cases on this stand to see and some power supplies. The one directly behind me is interesting. This is the Farah V1, is how I'm reading that. I hope I'm correct. And when I first saw it, I thought, Colink, it's got a kind of glazed in front panel. I thought, how does that breathe? And I looked again and realized it's metal mesh. There's a filter directly behind it, but that is all mesh. That's breathing. Three 120 fans by the look of it. It's got a full system built inside. Loads of RGB inside, tempered glass window and all the rest of it. That's all good. But my initial impression, incorrect. I'm liking the look of that. And that's a regular mid-tower 80X chassis, which is probably around 80 quid. And we've got Gamers Nexus sneaking into shot. In fact, I'm going to grab Steve. Steve, come here. Come round, Steve. Come round. Join us. That was hilarious. I was just like... <laughs> How's it going, Leo? Absolutely fine, Steve. So... <laughs> The best hairdo of Computex 2019 goes to Steve. Just tell us what you've enjoyed so far of the show and at Silverstone. Uh, Silverstone, the alt is pretty cool. Like it's a return to the uh, like the high performance approach for Silverstone, and it's got some some glass and some RGB LEDs. Which I'm not sure how I feel about that, but if it opens up the market a bit more to Silverstone, that's a good thing. The show, uh, I guess AM4 kind of wins this, or X570 wins for coverage, as you, you well know. Discussion we were having, uh, if we're going to jump to AM4, which seems a bit rude at Silverstone, what the heck. Uh, 16 phases, 8 phases doubled, all that good stuff, your build side thing. Uh, is the world moving? Because you've, you've actually been breaking open that whole conversation the past year and a half. You've done amazing work there and Buildzoid. Buildzoid's so, done a lot of it, yeah. He's, he's responsible for the, the technical side of it, for sure. Um, yeah, so I think the, like Asus had a whole conversation for us about their, their twin eight, whatever they marketed it at uh, originally, you know? Uh, so that's like, I guess transient response is a big focus for them, which is kind of interesting. We're still trying to catch up and learn about like why they're making the design decisions they are. And then uh, MSI, as we were talking about using like the, the quadrupler mixed in with the doublers. It was a bit confusing at first, but I mean, Buildzoid figured it out immediately, obviously. Um, so yeah, the good news is it looks like everyone's prepping for 16 core, which does exist. Uh, <laughs> And you heard it here for, I actually haven't shared this yet, uh, AMD accidentally confirmed it to us because they were talking about a, um, they said, you know, it's amazing this platform started with a, a quad core and now we've quadrupled it to 12 cores, <laughs> which isn't how math works. Uh, so anyway, I heard it here first. I didn't share that on my channel yet. That's a Leo exclusive. <laughs> Excellent. Are you a member of the Intel is uh, on its knees, it's dying, they've had a bad time? Because, I mean, so many people have gone totally for the hyperbole. So your considered gamers nexus take uh, on Intel 2019-2020? Uh, I think they're not dying. Like, Intel's what, like a $200 billion market cap? They're fine. Um, Intel needs to do something in, in the mainstream DT and enthusiast desktop for sure, but uh, HEDT, they still have some unique advantages, like memory latency is advantaged over Threadripper. Um, and then on the, I mean, like on the desktop side, i7 for sure, i5, those are in trouble. But um, uh, be beyond that, I think like they're not gonna go away in the next two years. It's just gonna take them a long time to respond properly, I think. Officially, Intel not dead. And finally, the fact that NVIDIA at this show seems to have basically nothing, but then on the other hand, they're dominating gaming graphics. So again, people are saying, oh, what have they got? But on the other hand, why would they react? So let's stretch it forward. Let's look three months up the road. Navi, excited, not excited, RTX 2070 level. Again, the distilled version. So I would like to see AMD release a flagship sometime in the past 10 years. <laughs> like. Uh, so sooner is better. Uh, I guess to be fair, they had like 390X is pretty competitive at one point. But um, yeah, no, it's like Navi's looking, obviously we'll need to test it. I can't make any firm like opinions on it because I haven't touched it or even tested it yet. But uh, it's good to see that they are targeting some 2070 level performance. That's a popular market. I don't know how the pricing will be. Uh, we've heard rumors, Sapphire had some. I've heard those might not be accurate, uh, but yeah, I. NVIDIA absolutely needs more competition, like for sure, the way NVIDIA has been behaving with media. So I would like to see AMD do something to put some pressure on them. Uh, 
I am not convinced yet that Navi is it, but that'll depend on you know how the performance looks when it comes out. So you can't come to a firm opinion about Navi because it doesn't yet exist. Right. Blooming amateurs, it's, eh? It's actually all a myth uh, created by the Illuminati. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. <laughs> so is that the middle of the Silverstone video, or are you going to rip it out and do it separately? God, <laughs> honestly, probably double it up, actually. <laughs> yeah, so, look, who, Silverstone who? Yeah, we don't know Silverstone. <laughs> yeah, Chippy, I oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, can where we, were we up to? Can we keep his face in it? Oh, God, yeah, no, absolutely. No, 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 no. You don't think that's the thumbnail, do you, by any chance? No, 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 for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, Stephen, a 200 mil fan in the hair. Uh, love it, love it. Okay, we've done that. We'll go around here. SG14 Mini ITX, nothing at first to see, apart from that it's got this sort of slightly different accent plate. Here's the thing, it's magnetic. It unveils the optical drive bay, and if you want, you can simply slide it down. So we've seen moving covers over optical drive bays before. In this case, it's magnetic. Now, that looks like it's a cheap thing to produce, and frankly, things optical drive bays have no interest to me, but obviously, if you don't have an ODD, you just leave it in place. It's reasonable enough, and I don't think, oh, hang on, it might just fall off if you touch it. Anyway, it's a thing. I've not seen it before. Therefore, it's interesting. RL08 Micro ATX. For some reason in the UK, we don't do Micro ATX. I've never understood it, but we don't. Europe, on the other hand, they quite like it, because Micro ATX boards can be pretty much the, the same spec as an ATX. You get fewer expansion slots, but who cares? Uh, this is a proper system, it's a proper chassis, it's got dust filtration on the top, mesh front, RGB, what's not to like? It's gonna be a tad cheaper than a regular ATX, something like 80. Uh, it feels a little bit, I don't wanna say plasticky, but you know, kind of uh, budget, and that's absolutely fine by me. The thing is, I'm confident that's gonna do nothing in the UK, because it's the wrong form factor. That's our fault, not your, that's our fault, nothing to do with the Europeans. We've just come from Seasonic where they've got some new power supplies in the SFX form factor and Silverstone trumps them big time. So SFXL is 1000 watt. It's a heavy little thing, it's fully modular. Uh, it doesn't look that exciting from this angle apart from the 1000 which is a big deal, but the fully modular is neat. That's a hefty thing and it's a 1000. And then we have a regular SFX, interesting to see them uh, side by side as it were because it's much shorter again fully modular and that's rated at 750 it makes you wonder apart from the price why anybody needs a bigger power supply unless they're going way beyond a thousand watts which obviously mainstream users do not Silverstone of course does so they have an 850 here which is common or garden then they have this I've never seen a 1550 watt power supply before uh, it's not apparently rated uh, titanium it's tatnayayum uh, just to mock slightly, but 1550, that's an unusual rating, nonetheless clearly very high end. Now that Seasonic we just saw was 1600 watts, here we have the Decathlon Platinum 2000. So it's platinum rather than titanium, and 2000 watts, and God that's heavy, and obviously fully modular just as you'd expect, but super duper high end, and very good to see. LD03 Mini ITX, so obviously a tiny footprint. Uh, tempered glass, this is the first time uh, the guy who gave us the tour had seen this chassis. We're not sure how the panels come off. I don't dare give them a pull. I think they just pull off, but I don't dare risk it because uh, if I broke it, it would be a tragedy. A nifty little thing, quite heavily smoked glass, and yet you can see clearly inside because they've got so much RGB. This assembly inside from Bits Power is a combo kind of reservoir pump unit with manifold and all sorts of stuff. And I can see two pumps, I think. Uh, they're telling us that this may well go into production as a kind of a bundle with this particular chassis. I mean, I'm sure that uh, Bits Power system would work in other systems. They were not going to make it dedicated to, to one chassis. But that looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm liking that. Price was not a lot. It was about 100. Uh, so Mini ITX looks quite enthusiastic but a reasonable price. A quick, just realized I'm standing under a television, a quick look at some permafrost AIOs, 120, 240, 360. It's been pointed out to us, these are Silverstone's own pump technology, not Ace Tech. Uh, now the patent would appear to be going away, I'm not sure that's an issue, but nonetheless, their own technology. So AIOs from Silverstone. And then we come to their showstopper, and I'm not sure what I think about this. This is the Alter S1 with the don't touch 
uh, thing next to it, but we're going to touch it because what the heck. It's extended ATX, so we've got glass on the front, we've got the front I.O., we've got glass on the side, it's a big glass panel and it swings open. And apparently the reason they stuck the don't touch on is because somebody had tried lifting the panel and nearly broke it. And inside it's just absolutely cavernous. What we have, a pair of graphics card, but everything's vertical. This is the intake, three by 200 mil fans, obviously RGB at the bottom. Air comes in through here, goes up. Two vertical graphics cards, a great big air cooler. This is like a power supply cover stroke power shroud. Everything goes in from the other side. So it's not just a light box. And then we have hard drive caddies in the back. Now, if I'm being entirely blunt, it's a big thing. The actual core chassis is fairly crude. That box there to hold the cabling, it's some plexi. The hard drive caddies are just steel. So there's not actually a massive amount to see once you get beyond the tempered glass, which is absolutely lush. It's about 300, so that is definitely niche interest by definition. Uh, it's unusual for sure. It's blooming huge. I'm liking the look of it. The bare chassis, I'm told, 15 kilos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, we'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru at Silverstone at Computex 2019.